Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I didn't think I'd even be here this morning. <laughs> Emma and I both had a bad night, and when I'm about to present the word somewhere, and something like that happens, I always know that God's going to do something special. Amen. Because the enemy sort of knows in advance, you know, what we're going to be talking about, and he's ready to throw the monkey wrench in or whatever. Okay? Amen. Just good to be here. Get things lined up here first. I should have had these marked, and then it would have been easier. Okay. I'll get it. <laughs> the first scripture is from Numbers 24, verse 17. Come on, fingers, it's time to work. <laughs> I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel and batter the brow of Moab and destroy all the sons of tumult. Then we want to go to Isaiah. Isaiah seven fourteen. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Amen. Amen. Then we're going to go to Matthew 2. Matthew 2 verses 1 and 2. And after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. A superstar has been born. And that's what this season is all about as we approach Christmas. Amen. A superstar has <coughs> been born. Moses wrote the book of Numbers in 1405 BC. And this took place while he is requiring a census to be taken of all Israelite men who were eligible to go to war. And in this, in this scripture, he's talking about a Messiah. A Messiah is coming. A superstar is going to be born. How could, how could Moses know this? 405 years before the birth of Jesus. That's a, that's a, lot, of, a lot of years yes. uh, to make a prediction. A superstar is going to be born. Isaiah wrote his book between 700 and 680 B.C. 
How could he know of a Messiah coming? It's just like uh, right now in our world, and many of our churches are experiencing what the word talks about, a falling away. And, and, and we think that, that's so sad, and I'm sad about it, that more people aren't hearing the word. But that's one of the things the word tells us. There's going to be a falling away. There's just a lot of, a lot of people that are not uh, too interested in spiritual things, and that's so sad. A human star was a superstar. Jesus Christ, God's Son, became a human star. But he was also the superstar that the Word was talking about. Now why was he a human star? Because of the importance of a Redeemer. This one was to come, a human being, but also the spiritual being. He was to come and be a Redeemer. Now Hollywood has sports and rock stars, and every once in a while they have their special celebration. Now, Jesus Christ is a superstar, and that's better than a megastar. <laughs> I don't know how many of you take time to, uh, to look at the stars. And the more we look at them and the more we study about them, they are so amazing. Amen. They are so far away, and yet they shine so beautiful. The star system was invented by Hollywood movie stu studios in the early 20th century to, to promote their particular brands, things that they wanted to sell, things that they wanted to do, uh, such as movie, ticke movie tickets, all kind of revenue would come because they were talking about a star system. Heavenly stars in our solar system. And I don't know a lot about this, and what I know is what I have read. But it's interesting. When we think of our solar system, the most famous is the sun. And most of us know that it's 93 million miles from the earth. 93 million miles. I can't even <laughs> comprehend that. The sun has an impressive size, which is 330,000 times greater than our Earth. That's how big the sun is in comparison to the Earth. As a star named Eta Carnu, for instance, has a mass estimated to be 100 to 150 times that of our sun. So beyond the sun out there, there are these, these stars. And you know, if you take a dime, some night go out when the stars are out there that you can see them, and hold a dime up. And in many cases, that dime will, will cover that, mm -hmm. that star. But you can't see it. But yet, when we think about how far away it is, isn't, isn't that amazing, amazing God's ability? He's, he's made these. Can we even begin to think about how 
far some of these are out there in space. The star in the east led the wise men to the house where Jesus and his parents lived. So there were these wise men and, and looking at the scrolls and so forth, realized that there was a person coming. And uh, so they, they began to look. And then one day, the star appeared. It probably wasn't there before, but it appear, appeared. Now, we know that God created these. We look in Genesis 1, 16, and it said this, Then God made two greater lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. And he made the stars also. He made, he made it all. And when we think how these two uh, lights, these two uh, stars, uh, the sun and the moon, how they, how they influence uh, all these things on, on this earth. Anyone that uh, does landscaping or gardening or any of those kind of things realize how important the sun and the moon are. And if they are not working properly, actually we couldn't raise anything to take care of all the people that live on this planet. In Psalm 147, verses 4 and 5, it says, God counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. How about that? All those stars. And he counts every one. He knows the name. Great is our God and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. That's what the psalmist says. And then as we look in Scripture, God made a promise to Abraham about his descendants. Genesis 15, 5. When he brought him outside, when God brought Abraham outside, he said, well, look toward the heavens, and count the stars if you were able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. Now think of that. We're in technicality, we, we are all descendants of Abraham. And here Abraham's looking up there and, and trying to count all those stars. Stars. It's just impossible. If you ever go out on a starry night and try to count them, you'll realize it's impossible. And then there's a, a verse that, that I like. It's one of my one of my favorites. Psalm 19:1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. The heavens declare the glory of God. That's all that that's way out there, plus the firmament that's in a little closer to our earth. Amen. God made it all. That's his handiwork. Mm -hmm. The ancient Chinese who kept the most meticulous astronomical records noted an object which appeared for more than 70 days in March and early April, April 5 B.C. Uh, I wish we'd quit selling, uh, celebrating Christmas in December. That's 
<laughs> that's not when it happened. That's true. Amen. Amen. Now, one time I had read something about how that all happened. But uh, um, the coming of Jesus was sometime in March or April. Not, not December. Well, I know one thing, they make a lot of money <laughs> when we think about uh, uh, Christmas. The my, wise men were likely Medes from Mesopotamia region and uh, were Jews who lived in exile for about 70 years. And so they were looking. They were looking for this special star that was going to appear. What's the fundamental purpose of Christmas? You know, there's so much that goes on as far as celebrating Christmas that really is, is not a proper uh, celebration. The purpose of Jesus' coming was to die for our sins. That's, that's the truth. That's Thank what you. it's all Thank about. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, if we don't remain clear about why he had to be born, why the star of Bethlehem had to lead the Gentile uh, scholars to witness his incarnation, and why he is the brightest human star to walk the stage of Earth. He is the superstar. Yes, he Man. Is. Now, if we don't understand those kind of things, we run the risk of celebrating Christmas for the wrong reasons. Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. Yes. I guess maybe this year, Emma and I will probably celebrate uh, Christmas better than any time. We're, we're living a, a time in our life that our, our finances are so slight at times. We're amazed how God just keeps taking care of us. Amen. Have you ever reached a time in your life you didn't have much of anything? Yes. Technically, I'm and I, that's about, I think all of you know we live in a home, Providence, Providence home. So we, uh, our little house down the road is going to be sold here real quick. At the present time, we don't have a car. So in so many ways, we're at a point that we've probably never been before, but yet God provides for us. Amen. It's, it's amazing when you don't have anything and you trust him, how he takes care of things. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Adam and Eve were bright stars when God created them in the Garden of Eden. But something happened there. Their bright stars that they were died when they sinned against God. As ours did as their descendants. When we sin, it changes the whole, the whole picture. And so as we're about to celebrate Christmas again, there will be a lot of talk about the stars and, and there will be things that will be sold in, in connection with the star. 
There is only one true star in humanity. And at the Christmas season, and his name is Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. T.D. Jakes said this about Jesus, the superstar. Along my wife's, along my life's journey, I discovered a star that does last forever, and his name is Jesus, because he is the superstar. He's going to last forever. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Lord. Even when this old earth thank you, Jesus. no longer remains. He is the superstar. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Precious Jesus, we we thank you for coming. That's that's really what Christmas is all about. You're coming as a human being, but also a divine being. You came so that you could die for our sins, so that we could one day live with you. And that one day would extend into what is called eternity. Yes. And we will continue and continue and continue to live with you. You are the superstar. Help us as we will celebrate your birth once again to remind people of who you really are, the superstar. Yes. There are many people in this world that would like to be and even try to be superstars. But they will never supersede you because you are the superstar. And so this morning we give you thanks and praise yes. for what you're doing right here in this spot, in this, in this church, and with these people. We just thank you. That as people look at us as we celebrate you as the superstar, that they might come to know you and to love you yes. and to serve you. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for the privilege of sharing with you. Amen. Yes, thank Amen. you. Thank you.